Welcome back, everybody. Here we are continuing our journey through the Western Cascades. I'm Howie Brownstein of the Columbine School of Botanical Studies. And I'm Stephen Yeager with the Columbine School of Botanical Studies. And, and we're here in the lava. On behalf of Mountain Rose Herbs, we're here in the lava. The lava beds. A pretty exciting place. Some of the newest lava we have here. This is new lava from the the Belknap Crater, I believe. Belknap Crater? Was correct. it like hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago? No, I can't hundreds. remember them. It, was, yeah. it wasn't that long though, um, compared to much lava. Uh, we're, we're, we're at middle elevations in the Hudsonian zones in the western Cascades of Oregon. And you know what I like about this place, Steve? What's that, Howie? This place rocks! <laughs> We're done. I'll right. move out of the way. How about this this plant over here? Here's our next plant. This is the manzanita, the Arctostaphylos patula. Patula or patula. Um, this is another common plant you'll see here in the middle elevations in the lava dominated soil in the western cascades. Uh, so it's a very beautiful plant in the heath family, the Ericaceae. Ericaceae? Ericaceae is the heath family. We know other plants in the Ericaceae, like the vacciniums in the huckleberries. I like huckleberries. Yeah. Uh, you'll, one of the things you, you'll see about this plant is that it has this beautiful red, smooth bark. And then as it gets older, the bark exfoliates, kind of like your skin exfoliates, it kind of, but the bark will actually peel away. And uh, that's one of the things you can see with these manzanitas. Another thing with the manzanita is they have very leathery leaves, and that's a botany term. And uh, they have, uh, in this stage right now, they're going to fruit, and they're not quite red yet, so uh, they're kind of in between the flower and fruiting stage. Were you saying uh, that the fruits are immature, like me? I didn't quite say that, but sure, now that you put it in perspective, yes, Howie, I agree. Manzanitas, uh, the leaves are astringent. Astringents dry, draw, and shrink swollen tissue. And they're mildly antimicrobial. Repetition is the key to mastery. Astringents dry, draw, and shrink swollen tissue. And they're mildly antimicrobial. Something unique about the manzanita is that it's not just a tannic acid astringent that dries, draws, and shrinks swollen tissue. It also contains a bunch of glycosides. Glycosides are a family of chemicals. It has a bunch of glycosides in it. Uh, related to the glycoside, arbutin glycoside. The arbutin glycosides that are found in manzanita, when you eat them, and they get you eat them, uh, they go through your GI tract uh, go all the way into your small intestine and the sugar of the glycoside is broken off. They get absorbed through the small intestine. They go up through your portal vein into your liver where they're changed again. Then they get into general circulation where it goes all over your body. It even goes to this part of your ear where it probably doesn't do anything at all. But then as it goes all the way through your body, when it gets to your kidneys, it, it gets changed again and becomes methylhydroquinone. Methylhydroquinone? Methylhydroquinone. It becomes methylhydroquinone, which is uh, released through your urinary tract and is a urinary tract astringent and disinfectant. So it becomes a urinary tract disinfectant. So it dries, draws, and shrinks swollen tissue in your urinary tract. That's the manzanita Arctostaphylos patula contains arbutin glycosides, which are excreted in your urinary tract as methylhydroquinone. It's also of great ecological importance in such ecosystems as the Ponderosa Pine Zone in Eastern Oregon and beyond, and a, a major player of the chaparral in Southern California because this plant is a closely related to fire. It's closely related to fire. In fact, if you look at its red bark 
and the way the red bar gets smaller and smaller and dances in the wind, you'll see that manzanita is actually fire slowed down and embodied into a plant. Uh, in fact, uh, manzanita and fire go together uh, hand in hand in a variety of ways. And if you're interested in the details of manzanita ecology, I would refer you to the manzanita episode on In Defense of Plants. Thanks for watching. It's been a real blast out here in the lava with you all. But we have to get back to work. Get back to the office. See you next time. Bye.